know. I'm covering is the question of when does life begin? And I thought, what better authority to look to than our neighborhood uh, card store, which tells us life begins at 40. Now, <laughs> we can look at that and laugh because we know it's not true, at least in terms of our biological life. And the reason I thought it would be good to start with uh, that cute little remark that life begins at 40, because we can know with assurance that life doesn't begin at 40. And if we can know with assurance that life doesn't begin at 40, can we also know with assurance precisely when it does begin? When it comes to the abortion debate and certainly other moral issues that involve the question of when does life begin, we frequently hear people say, we just don't know. We just don't know when life begins. And my question to that would be, do we really not know? Because when some people say they don't know when life begins, in the same breath, they will say that they would not allow abortion after implantation or they would not allow abortion after three or six months, or they would not allow abortion at the point of birth. And if they say they don't know when life begins, but they draw a line, they actually are claiming to know when life begins. They're claiming life begins wherever they draw the line and no longer permit things such as abortion or abortifacient chemicals to be in use. And as a result of that, I would say the real question we have to ask is, is the line that we draw, be it implantation, three or six months, birth, or some other place, is the line we draw based on logic or based on convenience? And that's the real question I believe in the medical community. You have to ask of yourself and ask of your peers. Is the line we draw logical or is in fact it a matter of convenience? One of the, the last remarks that uh, Debbie put on the screen there is a remark that we do often hear amongst healthcare professionals, and that is science has not been able to give a definitive answer as to the question of when life begins. And I would fundamentally challenge that claim, although I frequently hear it from people who, let's say, support abortion or whatever the case may be, is they will say science hasn't been able to give an answer. And what I'm hoping to successfully do this afternoon is show you that science, and does, uh, science does, in fact, give us a definitive answer as to when life begins. But before I show how life of science has given us that answer, let me tell you what science cannot do. Science cannot tell us when an individual is in soul, when a soul enters an individual. And science cannot tell us that because that's a matter of theology, that's a matter of philosophy. But it's important to keep in mind that science's inability to come to a conclusion about another field of study doesn't translate to an inability to come to a conclusion about its own field of study. So in terms of the science behind when life begins, we know that that begins at fertilization, as I'm going to prove. But I will submit to you that people often say we don't know when life begins, not because we don't know, but because we don't want to know. Not because we don't know, but because we don't want to know. And the best way to prove that is to begin by talking about the reproduction of dogs. Not a controversial topic. This is a very old and blurry photo of the only pet I ever know, uh, ever knew in terms of my own pet. And uh, his name was Scotty. And Scotty showed up on the doorstep of my family's home one um, snowstorm. And we let him into the house and gave him a little dish of ice cream. And when the weather got a little better, we drove him off to the SPCA and no one claimed him, so we claimed Scotty. Now here's a question. When did Scotty first come into existence? It's not a complicated question, it's not a confusing question. If someone said, well, Scotty first came into existence when he showed up on your doorstep, we would know that that would be ridiculous because suddenly seeing him isn't what brought him into existence. Also, if someone said, well, when Scotty was born, that's when he first came into existence, we would also know that that's not logical because birth is simply a change of location, in Scotty's case, from his mother's uterus to the outside world. The scientific community accepts the fact that with other species, such as with dogs, life begins at fertilization, when Scotty's dad's sperm fertilized the egg of Scotty's mom. And from fertilization onwards, there was nothing substantively which changed about the nature of Scotty. He certainly got bigger, more developed, developed hair, fur, for example, and the ability to bark. 
But from fertilization onwards, who Scotty is as opposed to another dog, uh, that was determined at the very beginning. It's interesting then that we seem to say we don't know when it comes to our own species. And that's why I think it comes back to, some, to the issue of not us not knowing, but really not wanting to know.